Hello, everybody. Welcome to week two of the ELI online pronunciation course. Today, we're going to be working on individual sounds and words. So in particular, for this lesson, we'll learn about and we'll practice consonant sounds, vowel sounds, and syllable stress sounds. So get ready. We're going to be speaking a lot. All right, so first, we're going to talk about one of the biggest problems with pronunciation in English is there are many, many different sounds. English has 44 different sounds called phonemes, and that's more than lots of languages have. Um, so one big problem is noticing all of those different sounds, those different phonemes. Um, because if you don't know about them and your language doesn't have them, you might not hear a difference. And if you cannot hear a difference, then you will have problems pronouncing the difference. Okay, so in order to improve this, we need to first work on knowing about the different phonemes in English and then working on practicing hearing the difference and practice pronouncing the difference. One good way to do that that we'll talk about a few times in this lesson, and I encourage you to practice by yourself, is to work on something called minimal pairs. Minimal pairs are two words that only have one difference in sound. So for example, these two words, sheep and cheap, the first sound, the sh and ch sounds are different. So. If you're at home, practice, you can say it with me, sheep and cheap, okay? So those were different consonant sounds. These are different vowel sounds, okay? So this one is very difficult. We have, sometimes people call it the short I sound. Sometimes people, um, you know, there's a phonetic symbol for it. There are many different ways to refer to that sound, but it's the I sound, okay? And here we have the long E sound, um, but another thing that we call it is the, it's the E sound, okay? So here we have slip and sleep. Here we have long A and short E. Wait, wet. Wait, wet. Light, right. So that's the initial R and the initial L sounds. And here, our final TH sounds are different. This one is the th. If you hold a piece of paper up to your face, there's some breath there. And here it's the th sound with no breath. Breath and breathe. Breath, breathe. OK, so with these minimal pairs, if you find a recording that says both words, um, which I'll show you some websites that have that for practice, you can start to hear the difference. First, it's very important to hear the difference. Then you want to start to practice the difference. Okay, so if I say cheap, did I say the first one or the second one? I'll say it again, cheap. Okay, this time I said cheap. Okay, slip, wet, light, breath, okay? So if you practice trying to tell which one you hear, that's very good. And if you practice trying to say both words and making sure that it's a different sound that you can, you know, whoever's listening to you can hear the difference in the sound. It's very important. So working on minimal pairs is a great way to practice pronunciation. You find out what sounds you have problems with, and then you try to choose some words where you can focus and only really work on those sounds. Okay, so the first step to pronouncing all of these different sounds is noticing what they are, how they're different from other sounds, and then doing some focused practice to work on it. All right, let's talk about consonant sounds. There are about 24 different consonant sounds in English. And depending on what your first language is, some of them may be very easy if it's a common sound in your first language. 
and some of them might be very difficult if you do not have that sound in your first language. So for this ELI online course, we would like you to um, tell your teacher what sounds you would like to improve, okay? I will give you a list a little bit later of the different consonant sounds, but I would like you to try to say those words, listen to the sounds, think about the sounds, and tell your teacher which ones are difficult, which ones are easier, okay? And we will also listen to your speaking and give you that feedback as well. But if there's something you really want to improve, please let us know. Okay, when thinking about how to make a consonant sound, we have to focus on our lips and on our tongue. They do different things. So if it's a new sound to you, your face might be a little bit uncomfortable as you're learning to make the different sounds. Um, one website that I gave you here, I know you can't click the link, but you can copy it down and visit it. This is actually a site for computer programmers but it gives some good pictures about what the mouth looks like when people are saying different things. Um, you can also search on YouTube for some pronunciation videos and um, it will give you some good focused instruction on how to move your mouth for different consonant sounds. And your teacher here for the ELI online can also give you some advice of how to make the certain sounds. And then it just takes lots and lots and lots of practice. Um, and then another problem is even if you can make one sound by itself, that can be difficult if it's in a different place of the, in the word. Um, so maybe you can say think, but you have problems saying both. Maybe it's easier to say the sound at the beginning of a word than at the end. Um, or, you know, you can have different combinations of sounds. So maybe you can say the R sound or the L sound, but when they're together in a word like girl, it's more difficult, okay? Um, so this website here has some good practice and some good analysis and examples of different combinations of sounds, okay? So with consonant sounds, work to see what sounds you have problems with, then ask your teacher, see if you can understand how to make that sound, and then practice, practice, practice. Okay, so these are the different consonant sounds. I want to pronounce them for you and give you some words so you can know what they are and hear them, at least from me. Um, so practice with this slide, pause it and pronounce it, come back and listen to me again if it's a sound that you have a little bit of a problem noticing, okay? Because again, it's very important that you are able to hear the differences in these sounds, okay? So listen for the differences and also try to watch my face. What are my lips doing? Are they touching together? You can't see my tongue in, inside my mouth, um, but if it's doing something, I'll say something as well. Okay, so first one, pop. Okay, this one is very similar to the B sound, bob, except you have a puff of air that if you take your hand and put it in front of your face, you should be able to feel some air coming out on pop. Okay, so pop and bob, okay? We also have tot, tot, okay? Dad, those are very similar, the T and D sounds, okay? We have church, the ch, ch, ch sound. Your tongue kind of swipes to the front of your mouth, ch, okay? We also have, similar to that, a j, judge, Okay, spelling that can be a J or it also can be D-G-E at the end of a word. Okay, English spelling is crazy. I'm not going to talk much about spelling. Okay, we also have the K sound, which can be C or K or C-K. Um, 
Sometimes even the letter Q can make a K sound, okay? Like in cake. All right, we have G, which makes the G sound, gig. F, all right? Watch my, my lip, it touches my teeth. 50, okay, 50. All right, sort of similar to that is valve. Okay, my lip also touches my teeth, but there's no air, there's no puff of air. 50, valve, okay? Sometimes people struggle with the V sound, sometimes V and B. So pay attention to what your lip is doing, it touches your teeth, okay? Valve, all right? We also have sh, okay, for sh. My tongue is kind of forward in my mouth and I'm pushing some air forward, okay? Shh, shush, okay? That's different from ch, church, okay? We have y, yay, yay, okay? For th, this is a very difficult sound for many people, and there are two different th sounds, okay? One has air, one does not. Th2 has some air, thick, okay? So. Your tongue touches your teeth and you blow some air, thick, okay? We also have the TH1 sound, this, okay? There's no air. Your tongue will still touch your teeth and move backwards, but there's no air. Listen for the difference, this and thick, okay? So this is two different sounds, but both are spelled with TH, all right? Um, the S and Z sounds are very important also because we use S at the end of a word for plural nouns and sometimes for verbs, okay? And sometimes that can sound like S, S, like in sass, okay? Sometimes it can sound like a Z, like in zoo, okay? So that's another kind of complicated rule. Maybe we'll talk about it later or in another course, but just know that at the end of words, sometimes S makes a S sound, sometimes it makes a Z, a Z sound, all right? Then we have M, like in mom, N, like in nun, okay? At the ends of words, a lot of the time we have ng, the ng sound, okay? But depending on where you are, um, different parts of England, different parts of the United States. We don't like this sound very much, so we just say the N, we don't clearly pronounce the G. Um, but in lots of other places we do pronounce it. Sometimes we pronounce it sometimes and not other times, so it's a good sound to practice. So sing, sing, ng, sing, okay? With H, H is another sound. Some people pronounce it very clearly, others don't. But say it with me, have, okay, have. Then we have L, lull, okay? So your tongue needs to touch your teeth, lull, all right? R, especially in American English, is very interesting. <laughs> um, it, it's a difficult sound for many people. So at the beginning of a word, R, the, your tongue touches the sides of your teeth, R, okay? And then a lot of the time in the middle of a word or at the end of a word, your tongue will curl back, R. So for roar, your tongue has to move a lot, roar. So at the beginning, you kind of push it against the sides of your mouth, and then at the end, you pull it back, roar. Okay, then we have w, wide, with w. Notice what I have to do with my lips here, wide. Okay, and then we have this strange sound that we don't use very often, but sometimes when we have s in the middle of a word, it's kind of a j sound. It sounds very French, but vision. I don't know a good way to write it. It sounds like a z, h, maybe. Um, some languages will spell things with that ZH, but vision, all right? So those are the consonant sounds. Which ones are easy? Which ones are difficult? Practice with these words, practice with other words, and then let us know.
All right, so moving on. Um, in my classes at the English Language Institute at Missouri State University, I always, always, always have my students work on vowel sounds. Even if we work on other things, I make sure that they are working on their vowels and they're paying attention to their vowels. My reason is if you make a mistake with a consonant sound, most of the time someone will still understand you, okay? Um, they will be able to understand from the context what's going on. But vowel sounds, um, there are so many of them, and they make a big difference, okay? So to show you what I mean, let's look at all these different words. These are all different English words, okay, that start and finish with the same sounds. So these are all minimal pairs with one difference, okay? It's just the vowel sound, but these are all different words, okay? So listen with me and then um, I'll read through the words and then we'll talk about it, okay? This first line, pit, pat, pot, port, pert, peat, pout, okay? The next one, sit, seat, set, sat, sight, sought, suit, Soot, sort. Next one. Bit, bet, bot, bait, beat, bat, boot, boat, butt. The next one. Did, dad, deed, dead, died. Okay. And then the last one. My name. Phil, full, fail, full, feel, fell, file, fool, foil. Okay. So with these small differences in vowel sounds, it completely changes the word, okay? Um, and this can be very important because sometimes it can get kind of embarrassing. Um, there's one situation uh, with the short I sound and then the long E sound. If you go to Florida and visit the beach, that's great. But if you have a problem pronouncing your vowel and you use the short I sound in that situation, you have a very embarrassing sentence. So vowels are really important to work on. So um, let's talk about them a little bit more. Okay, so these are all of the different vowel sounds. First, I want to um, just tell you about something that we use here at the ELI that I think is a very useful way to talk about vowels. Um, it's made, I think, by the United States State Department, but we don't get any money from it. We just think it's really nice and we use it here. So if you Google color vowel chart, um, or you can also look for it on YouTube, there are a few videos. But it's a very nice way to remember the different vowel sounds and to practice them. So check that out. Uh, if you come to the ELI, you'll use it. If you come to the ELI, you might get a card like this that has the color vowel chart. But anyway, that's what we use. So, but I tried to um, put together the different vowel sounds in English here and kind of show you um, your mouth. <laughs> so this is your mouth. You, you might not recognize it, but this is the front, okay? This is the back, and this is the middle. This is kind of the top high in your mouth. This is in the middle, and this is low in your mouth, okay? Down in your throat, okay? With your mouth open, all right? So this is kind of where the sound is found when you make it, okay? Um, these sounds over here are combinations of two different sounds that you have to put together. So you have to move your mouth a little bit to make that vowel sound. Okay, so let's start high and in the front, okay? If you smile, you pull back your cheeks, you have the E sound like in meat, okay? This might be an uncomfortable sound because you have to really pull back your cheeks and this is tight. 
Okay, meat. If you relax a little bit, you have the short I sound like in hit. Okay, hit. So if you watch my cheeks, you can see the difference. Meat, hit. Meat, hit. Feel, fill. Okay, feel, fill. So my face is similar, but the vowel comes a little bit lower and I relax my cheeks to make that sound. A little lower, we have the E eh sound, the short E, like in met or fell, okay? So that, it's a little bit lower, we relax a little more and open our mouth a little bit, okay? Met, all right? Phil, like my name, fell. Okay. Mit, met. Okay. Eh. A little lower. This is a very American English sound. It's very common in lots of American English words that have just the letter A and no other vowels. Okay. It's a very ugly sound. It's not very common in other languages. So this is probably one to practice. It's the ah sound like in hat or mad, pat, okay? For this one, you have to open your mouth pretty wide, ah, and then your neck is tight, okay? We live in Springfield, the home of the Simpsons, so I always try to think of Homer Simpson grabbing Bart by the neck, and Bart is going, ah, okay? so. It's kind of an ugly sound. You may have to move more than you're used to with opening your mouth and making your throat a little tight, but that's a good one to practice. Ah, okay? Then we have the er sound, like in girl. This is kind of a uh and then an r sound together, all right? So if you have an r in the middle of the word, a lot of the time we make this er sound. For er, your tongue needs to curve back, er. Okay. In the middle, for some words and lots of unstressed vowels, we'll talk about that later, it's the uh sound, like in must. All right, uh, must. All right. Um, then we have the ah sound. This one is difficult for many people also. It's a very open sound, okay? So you have to open your mouth and really open your throat like you're going to sing something. Ah, uh, okay, hot, pop, ah, uh, okay? Then we have the oo sound, like in blue or true. Here you have to make a circle with your lips and it's a little bit tight, oo, okay? Then if you relax your lips a little bit, you have uh, good, would, Okay, stood, all right? And then if you kind of bite into an O shape, you get O, go, all right? Like you're about to start to blow out a candle, O, okay? Then we have these sounds, which are kind of two vowel sounds together. One is the pronunciation of the letter A, okay? Like in may or pay or day, all right? A. You kind of have to bite into that sound. A. Then we have O-Y, like in toy or boy or noise. Okay. Oi. So you kind of start with an O, but then you move it into an E. Oi. All right. Then we have I. I, like the letter I by itself, or like your I, or might. All right. And then we have the OW sound, or sometimes OU, is an ow sound. Like if something hurts you and you say ow, so you kind of start with that ah and then end with ooh. There's a lot of movement. Ow. Okay. Now. So these are the vowel sounds. It takes practice to be able to understand all of these and to be able to say all of them. So pay attention to your face, pay attention to where in your mouth the sound is coming from, 
Is it tight or is it open? All right, and it takes practice. Okay, so just some final thoughts on vowel sounds. Noticing is very important. You need to be able to hear the different vowel sounds if you're going to be able to pronounce them, okay? A good way to do that is to use minimal pairs. Remember, those are words with just one different sound, okay? So dad and did are minimal pairs because only the vowel sound in the middle is different, okay? These are some websites you can go to that have some good minimal pairs practice for vowel sounds. And the pronunciation pairs textbook um, is not too expensive. If you find it online and you can find the CD that goes with it or get the audio files with it, it has some really nice practice of hearing these words with minimal pairs and then with other things like dialogues that you can use for practice, both listening practice and pronunciation practice. So you need to keep practicing if you're going to improve your pronunciation of vowel sounds and consonant sounds. So use the resources that you have. And if you need more help, be sure to ask us. We'll try to help you find something that works for you. Okay, very quickly, and we'll probably talk about this a little bit in a later lesson because we're not talking about it much this time. Um, English has uh, word stress. Stress just means you say something louder, you say it a little bit stronger. Okay, so each word, if it has more than one syllable, a syllable is a part of a word. It's usually one consonant sound together with one vowel sound. So in the word apple, it has two syllables, app and pull, okay? Apple. And one of those syllables is a little bit louder and a little bit longer. Can you hear which one? Apple. Okay, in apple, the app is stronger, okay? You say apple, not apple, okay? So apple, there are two syllables. The first one is stressed. This is important because people who are listening to you will listen that one syllable needs to receive more stress. And that helps people listening to you understand what word you're saying. If you stress the wrong syllable, sometimes they will not understand you, even if you pronounce the sounds correctly, okay? Um, but also, a lot of the time your unstressed vowels, so the vowel sounds and syllables that are not stressed, many times um, you do not pronounce that vowel sound as clearly. Often you will pronounce it like the uh in but or like the i in pen. So like the word I said often, ah, the first syllable is stress, but in is kind of a i sound. It's not stated, you don't say it very clearly, okay? So you don't need to worry too much about the unstressed vowels, but the stressed vowels are very important, okay? So when you're practicing word stress in longer words, make sure that your focus is on clearly saying, uh, clearly pronouncing the vowel in the stressed syllable. Okay, great. So this is your homework assignment for this week. I would like you to make two recordings or one recording where you do both of these things. Um, do speak for about one to two minutes on each topic, but I would like you to speak about your family and speak about the weather, okay? Um, I will give you quite a few different vocabulary words to try out and use for this lesson. Uh, these vocabulary words have many different vowel sounds that we would like to listen for, okay? So this is a way where we can help you to focus on the vowel sounds in the different words, and we will make sure that you're using different words that have different sounds in them so we can kind of identify what you want some help on. But I would also like you to go back and look at the different vocabulary and words and sounds in this video. 
um, and ask your teacher for some help on problem sounds. So whatever you think is difficult or is your problem, ask and we'll try to give you some resources or advice to improving that, uh, to help you improve that problem. Okay? And then just in general, practice minimal pairs a little bit on the web. There are lots of resources and the more you practice, uh, the more you'll notice them, the easier it will be to pronounce them. Okay? Okay, so for this week's homework assignment um, on vowel sounds and consonant sounds and word stress, I have some vocabulary that I want you to try to use. You don't have to use all of it, but I think it will be helpful when you're planning what to say. And this also, these words also include many of the sounds that we've practiced today and many sounds that might be difficult for you, okay? So you can use other words. You don't have to use all of these words, but try to use some of them, okay? Okay, so let's practice some of this vocabulary for your homework assignment. These are the family words. I'd like you to listen for what vowel sounds I'm using when I pronounce these words, okay? Or also what consonant sounds are in the words that might be difficult for you to pronounce, okay? Family, children, parents, mother, father, sister, brother, cousin, oldest, youngest, cooperate, argument, genealogy, relationship, birth, value, home, and memories. Okay, you can use some or all of these words in your recording, but try to choose words that have sounds that are difficult for you to pronounce and you'll get more practice. And these are the vocabulary words about weather. So you can use these when you're talking about the weather. Springfield, Missouri, uh, where I am, has crazy weather. So sometimes we could use all of these words just to talk about the weather in one week. But please try to use as many of them as you can to talk about the weather uh, where you are. Okay, so I will pronounce them. Rain snow, sleet, hail, sunday, sunny, windy, terrible, terrific, cloudy, foggy, wet, humid, precipitation, forecast, storm, severe, drought, flood. Okay, I have a few suggestions for you while you're doing your homework assignment. Um, my advice to you is to write out what you'll say first. This gives you a chance, you know, you can look over your grammar, you can think about the words you're going to pronounce, and you can practice some of them before you make your recording, okay? One thing you might want to do is you can look up uh, word stress using any online dictionary or dictionary app, okay? These uh, different websites or different apps will show the syllables differently, but look for something like this that will show you um, the different syllables that you say. Diction Dictionary.com puts the stressed syllable in bold letters, okay? Um, on most dictionary websites and apps, you can also listen to the word. That's very helpful for understanding how to pronounce it, um, how to pronounce the different sounds and where the stress is, okay? So use an online dictionary to look up some of the words you're using in your recording, um, and then practice a few times, okay? The purpose of this course is so you practice more and then you get feedback on what you're doing. Okay, so take some time, practice what you're gonna record and then make your recording and email it to your teacher. It doesn't have to be perfect, mistakes are great, but practice a little bit before you do it and you know it'll be a little bit better. Okay, that brings us to the end of this week's lesson. 
Um, what to expect for next week's lesson is we're going to talk about another kind of stress. Today we talked a little bit about word stress, but next week we're going to talk about sentence stress. So in English, it's very important. We stress uh, some words in our sentences, and that helps the people listening to us understand what information is important or what we think about the information that we're telling them. It's very useful, very important. Um, so that's what we're going to focus on next week. And if we have a little extra time, we'll talk a little bit about linking, um, how we connect our words and our sounds in English. So that's what we'll work on next week. Have fun working on vowels and consonants and word stress this week. All right, bye.